you'll open up your Bibles to the 16th chapter of the book of Genesis. As we go through these days recently, there's a lot of people who are confused about the war in the Middle East. Why is the big question? Why did Hamas attack Israel? Why do they hate Israel? Is this a land grab? Couldn't be. Is this war about oil? Couldn't be. Is this war about retaliation for something Israel has done? Couldn't be. Well, then what's this war all about? We'll go to the Bible for our answers. And in Genesis chapter 16, we'll begin to read when this war started. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarah. Then Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw Sarah, that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes, and the rivalry was born. The war that we're witnessing on our big screen color television sets started right here. In Genesis chapter 16, it's a war that's in the bloodlines. It's a war caused by biology. It's a war given to humanity by God. There's a lot of symbolism in this war. We'll develop that when we get to the New Testament in the book of Galatians. If you'll notice in verses 15 and 16 of the same chapter, we'll see this. Therefore, the, uh, so Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abraham. Isaac was born when Abraham was 100 years of age. So we see that Ishmael has a 14-year head start on his little brother. Ishmael will represent the world. Isaac will represent the kingdom, the church, Israel, the Jews, all of those things as time evolves. Ishmael will represent the Arab lands. He will represent the nation of Islam. He will represent the Muslims. And Isaac, from the free woman, from Sarah, will represent the Christians represent the Jews, represent the Israelites, depending on the time period that we're looking at. Now let's turn to the book of Genesis and the 21st chapter, and we'll study the birth of Isaac. First verse, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. Isaac is going to be born a divine birth. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, who Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight years old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. So the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great sacrifice or feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. Ishmael, 14 years older, is a bully. 
He's going to persecute the young child. He's going to scoff. He's going to mock. He's going to make the young child's life miserable because he is jealous, because he is full of hate, because he is different, because he hasn't been blessed with the privilege of the son that was born of the divine birth and the rivalry that started between Sarah and Hagar has now evolved into this rivalry between Ishmael and the young son Isaac. Verse 10, Therefore, because of the scoffing, Sarah said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. You see here there's a separation in the family of, of Abraham. That Sarah thinks this child doesn't have anything to do with my child because this child is of the concubine and my child was born from my womb and he was given to me by God in the old age. My child is better. My child is different. So we see this separation taking place. Verse 11, And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son, but God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice, for in Isaac your seed shall be called, meaning in Ishmael your seed shall not be called. So now the separation which started when Ishmael was born between the two women, Sarah and the Egyptian maidservant, has progressed to being between Ishmael and Isaac. It now progresses another step. God is involved. And God says there will be separation. And I want you, in though, even though this is your son, I want you to cast out the bondwoman just as your wife requested. Verse 13. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed in the physical sense. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulders, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba, and the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot, for she said to herself, Let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. Ishmael, the son of Hagar, a concubine, is half Egyptian. The rivalry, the persecution between Israel and Arabia, between the Jews and the Muslims, between Israel and Islam, between the world and Christianity was born right here on these pages. And the more we know about these births and what God intended when these births happened, the more we'll understand the war between Hamas and Israel today. We can say that Isaac was the seed that produced all those people who live in God's spiritual kingdom. And Ishmael produced the Gentiles, and more accurately, the Muslims, the nations of Islam, and the people of the world. 
This rivalry has been going on to this day. Hundreds of wars have been fought between these two factions. Many Christians have been persecuted because of these factions, and that is simply what we see going on today in the Middle East. It's an example of jealousy and hate and competition and religion still fueling Middle East contact. In Joshua chapter 23 and verse 1, it came to pass, after a long time, the Lord gave rest to Israel from all their enemies round about. Then Joshua was old and advanced in age. So we see that Israel has rest from her persistent enemies from the Arab lands all around, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, and all these people who came from the lineage of Ishmael. When you're good, when you're behaving, when you're obedient, God will give you rest. And when you resort to wickedness and idol worship, God sends these people from Ishmael against you to go to war so he can get you back. You leave God, he sends in the Arabs. They fight you, make your life miserable, you get humble, you repent. Guess what? God sends in someone else to wipe out the Arabs and send them back to where they belong. Same thing we saw this morning in Bible class with Samson and the Philistines. In Judges chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible says the land had rest for 40 years. In Judges 3, verse 30, Moab, an Arab, was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest for 80 years. These two sides might have peace among them for decades, but they always return to Genesis 16 and Genesis 21, and here's another war. And these two sides always return to war because it started by the more aggressive of the two, and that will be the descendants of Ishmael. It's like a ping pong tournament, back and forth. Here come the Ishmaelites. Here come the Arabs. Here come the Muslims. Here comes the land of Islam fighting against the more peaceful people because that's what they do. Before we continue, can I prompt you a bit today to think back to 9-11-2001. Not all Muslims are like that. Not all Muslims are evil, but it only takes a few to make your life miserable because these people know what it means to hate. And they can hate you like nobody on the earth hates you because you believe in Jesus Christ and they don't. They're Muslims who believe in their own prophet, Muhammad. And so this is another reflection of the rivalry between the two groups. This is the seventh conflict between Israel and an Arab nation since 1949. That's seven wars in 75 years. There's no rest from this war. Learn that from the study today. It is what it is. And this is just a continuation of the rivalry that erupted in Genesis 16. We just have bigger guns today. If one could go back and count the wars fought between these two people, it would no doubt add up to hundreds, if not thousands, of wars. It's a war that has no end. It just goes into a period of rest and then rises up again for more war. And people in America ask the question, why? Why all this hate? Where does it come from? It's in the bloodlines. Who picked the fight? Hamas. What is Hamas? Arabs, Muslims. And there they are, being contentious, being jealous, picking a fight with Israel, being full of hate, loving bloodshed. And even though these people represent Ishmael from a long time back, 
Ishmael may not claim Sarah as his mother, but he can still lay claim to knowing God and having a relationship with God. For instance, in verse, uh, I can't remember the verse, chapter 14, at age 13, Ishmael was circumcised along with the rest of Abraham's house. When God gave the command to circumcise on the eighth day, those who were on Abraham's soil, all of his servants, including Abraham and Ishmael, were circumcised then. Isaac would be the first one circumcised on the eighth day for obvious reasons. So Ishmael was circumcised. God said in Genesis 21 verse 18, he would make of Ishmael a great nation that was said two times in these chapters, and God did. Egypt, great nation. Saudi Arabia, big, powerful nation, rich nation. The United Arab Emirates, go around to Iran and Iraq and all the nations of that part of the world. They're great nations. They have scientists. They even have a space program now. God saved the boy's life when he was about to die of thirst in the desert. We already read it in chapter 21, verse 19. And in verse 21, there's also this statement. God was with the lad. In every place you see, God shows no partiality. He loves and he provides for Ishmael, but not the same way he would the son of the free woman. He's still going to know God. Now let's go to the New Testament and we'll wrap it up. A fairly lengthy reading from the Galatian letter in chapter 4. So now we've gone thousands of years from Abraham's house. And we're going to see some of God's intentions here for separating the two families, the two boys, for making two great nations instead of one. And we'll see if we can put some of the pieces of the puzzle together in Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond woman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman was born through from a promise, which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which is now and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who did not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren... As Isaac was, are children of promise. Ishmael is not. There's the division by God. There's some built in jealousy there. There's some built in competition. And there's built in hatred. Many of these people who practice such, they don't even know why they do such things. But if you turn to the Bible, you'll get it. We know why you're in Israel. We know why you're fighting against Israel. Because deep in your subconscious, you're jealous, you're competitive, and you hate. Because they see the people of Israel as being different because Israel would discriminate against them for being Gentiles through all those years. God commanded them to come out and be separate. Let's go back and continue to read. Verse 29. But he who was born according to the flesh, I, uh, Ishmael, then persecuted him 
who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. There's no end to this. In the first century, you're going to find the same conduct that you found in Genesis 16 and Genesis 21. It's the same way. It's the same old thing. It's the same old song and dance. Ishmael's people are cantankerous people. In fact, later in the Bible, God would refer to these people as having the spirit of a wild donkey. He said that about the Gentiles, about the Arabs. He didn't say that about his people. Verse 30, nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. We need to understand some things from these teachings today. First, this war has been going on for thousands of years. We ought not be surprised that they're at war again. And if we live long enough, they'll be at war again. And they'll be at war again because that's just the disposition of some of these people. Not all the Muslims are like this. And not all the Muslims will live as Muslims for the rest of their lives and will never confess Jesus Christ and be saved. Not all the Muslims cannot be children of the free woman. But you've got to be converted. It didn't make sense when 14-year-old Ishmael fired the first shot by picking on a two-year-old boy. You see how clumsy that is? That's just flat out disrespectful that you, 14 years of age, are scoffing and mocking and persecuting your own two-year-old brother because he comes from different blood than I do. I come from the Egyptians and Sarah and Abraham. That child came directly from heaven. He was born of a divine birth. And I don't like this guy because of how he got into the world. And he's got more privilege than me. There's a rivalry here. I'm just about finished. May I wrap up the lesson? This is what life is like without Jesus Christ. All this war and all this persecution and all of this misunderstanding about the Bible, all these people who are still fighting a war over the context of scriptures that was taken away by Jesus Christ's death on the cross, and they don't understand that, and they're still fighting a Bible war that's thousands of years old because they don't understand it's over. And when you let that hate come into your heart, that rivalry, that competition, that mocking, that scoffing, you know where that comes from? You know why you're this way? Because you didn't let Jesus Christ come into your heart. And of course, if they were here today, they'd shoot me right after the services. Because they hate Christians. They hate God's people. They don't have enough Bible knowledge to know why. Because they still think it's like it was in the olden days. <clears throat> Thousands of years ago, we carry on those rites. We carry on those mores. We carry on those traditions. Because we don't believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Or are you going to be at war against God? Would you like to get the hate, the competition, the rivalry, the gossip, the scoffing, and the mocking out of your life? Then you need to become a Christian today. 
and let Christ take away all your sin. It's a war that has no end. God used this war to his advantage. That's why it happened in the first place. He needed some warring nations to come into Israel and slap the boys around a little bit so you can get your mind right with God. God protected you with risk. You fell back into idol worship. God gave these Arab nations the spirit of a wild donkey so they would come in and beat you and you would humble yourself and get back to the God who wants to be your savior. That was the reason they were created in the first place. Everything God does in scripture, it's done for a purpose and that is to save man's soul. So this war has no end. There will be others after it if we live long enough. Don't be surprised. Just resort back to the scriptures. Steady as she goes. If you're in the audience today and subject to the invitation, please come to the front at this time while we stand and sing.